But all that is Indian is not people, poverty, and superstition. This beautiful palace of the Maharaja of Baroda is a symbol of another and a vastly different India. It is the home of the enlightened ruler of an Indian province of three million subjects, chief executive of the most progressive and most industrialized domain of India, and one of the richest men in the world. The park within the palace grounds is a beauty spot of tropical foliage and massive fountains. India is not all filth and poverty. It, too, has beauty. Slender girls in the palace grounds rehearse a traditional dance that has come down through the ages. The music, too, is traditional, as are the instruments that pour forth notes and strains peculiar to the land. Every little gesture is symbolic. A gold-encrusted carriage, followed by a guard of soldiers and servants, contrasts the plain and lowly life of the multitude. But it is the people themselves who demand this splendor for the rulers. Administration duties in this vast land are many. Service to the people stamps a Maharaja with a term of greatness. Much has been done by those rulers who have risen above the system of Indian caste and have brought the standards of India's government into harmony with the world at large. In preparation for a parade or some official ceremony, a Maharaja's elephants must be gaily painted and adorned. Note particularly the artistry that went into the designing of a tiger around the trunk and eye of this old fellow. When he winks, it is hard to believe that you are really looking at an elephant. Rukkali is the favorite. His head bears another clever adornment, the image of an elephant. But what's this? A smoke? Well, why not if he enjoys it? After all, he is the favorite. Indian elephants can be trained to do anything their huge forms will permit. Now, a ceremonial procession with all the pomp and splendor that India can produce. A ruler surveys all from the back of his biggest elephant. This too is India as much as her millions will live in squalor. <laughs> 